that song? Oh, what Happy that? Joe. <laughs> What's that happy song? Happy Joe. It's called Happy Joe. Because happy Joe. Joe swings and he gets happy. So wow, is that an original? Yes. Oh wow, that's <laughs> from season that's one. That's fantastic. That's from season one from of this show. One, bringing it back for season seven. Wow. By the way, a happy anniversary yesterday. Yesterday was the this sixth anniversary of this show. We here. We come along. We here. What a long, strange trip it's been. Man, couldn't have predicted that one. Folks, my first guest tonight is the Emmy Award-winning actor you know from American Horror Story, Ratched and Mrs. America. She now stars in Impeachment, American Crime Story. I have to say, you're such a knockout. I just assumed you'd be dating some big DC player. Uh, what? I'm not dating. Why not? I'm kind of in something. And yet you feel lonely. Yes, affirmative. Well, that's no good. Tell me about him. It's, uh... It's just he's, um, unavailable. Someone long distance. Someone from work. Someone important. Is that why they sent you here? We should get back, right? Please welcome Sarah Paulson. I'm out of breath now, you guys. That was more activity than I did in a <laughs> so really long time. You're playing air Woo! everything. Yeah, and over trying to there. do what John does, which is not easy. We had your uh, lovely uh, partner, uh, Holland Taylor, I on know. last night. Did she have a good time? She had a great time. She Me was too. nervous. Oh, really? But, yeah, she gets She's nervous. She's a pro. What are you talking about? She's a pro, but she gets nervous. What is it like, the two of you, you're one of them really celebrity uh, really power winded. couples? <laughs> I'm really winded. Really? Steven, I'm really do you winded. Want, you want a shot? No, no, everything's what do you want? okay. Anything? <laughs> Can we get her an oxygen okay. tent, please? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. What was your question? Uh, uh, have you recently been tested for COVID? Is yes. my question. <laughs> <laughs> You've been. You this realize morning. we're not seeing symptoms yeah, no. here. No, no, uh -huh. this morning. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. Temperature's okay. For but now. I was saying, you guys yeah. are a glam, glam, glam celebrity power couple. What is it like to be? Have you have you accepted your role as a celebrity power couple? Uh, no. Because uh, all we do is sit around in sweatpants and watch television. That sounds not, pretty good. We're not that going anywhere. I mean, good. are you going anywhere besides here? I haven't been anywhere in a very long time. I go here and then I, and I go home and Correct. to the refrigerator and get some ice cream. Correct. Exactly. Me too. That sounds mm -hmm. exactly like what I'm doing on an average Sunday night. Um, you're now playing Linda Tripp. Oh, God, yes. I, I've got a photo here, but I don't want to take it out yet because this is a <laughs> it's treat. It's just so good. This is a, this is a treat it's such later. A good this photo. Is, this yeah. is the ramifications of playing <laughs> Linda Tripp. Yeah. You're playing Linda Tripp, and you say this is the hardest acting role of your entire life. What makes it so hard to play Linda Tripp? Um, mm, so many things. Um, chiefly, anytime you decide to play a person for whom many people have um, a lot of scorn for, she's, she's sort of detested. She's mm -hmm. thought of as um, a sort of hateful woman who I would argue uh, not a hateful woman, but a woman who did some hateful things. And I think there is a difference between a person who is uh, worthless um, and a person who made some terrible mistakes. I'm not sanctioning the behavior, kids. <laughs> I'm simply saying that when I decided to do it, I had to find a way to understand the choices she made. And in, in pursuing that, I found things about her that I thought were quite redeemable. Well, r remind the, the people out there who may not remember the late 90s, what did Linda Tripp, what was her involvement in the scandal? Well, Linda Tripp is essentially the linchpin. She is why we, we know about what happened between Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton. She taped her friend and turned these tapes over to the Office of the Independent Counsel, to Ken Starr. 
and then thus we have... And her motivations were what? Um, I think really complicated, and there's something you're going to find out in episode 10 that I think informs some of that, so I'm not going to tell you now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think ultimately, at the end of the day, Linda did believe she was doing something that was good for Monica, mm -hmm. who could not get off this loop uh, sure. about the president uh, and their relationship, and also she was so disgusted with what Bill Clinton was doing mm -hmm. with this young intern. She's in good it's company an, it's, there. It's an abuse of power in a lot of ways. Yes, and Linda, perhaps the most famous workplace abuse of power. Correct, know, and but. Linda had a lot of respect for the institution of the presidency and felt that it was not being treated with enough respect. Now you, I hear, broke your wrist? Yes. Broke your wrist? I broke my... The, did Beanie Feldstein flip you? <laughs> Why do you... I, you have I have a sneaking suspicion that it was Linda, the ghost of Linda Tripp, <laughs> because, because I fell up the stairs, and I think that is not a... a yeah, up them. Yes. You know, like, not yes. like, ooh, down, I, my heels... No, just walking up, the, up some average stairs and yes. broke my wrist. Uh, and I also, the first screening we had of impeachment here in New York, I tripped on the red carpet going to take my picture, and I was like, this is starting to get weird. <laughs> Linda Tripp, she tripping me. <laughs> Linda Tripp's ghosting, because I think, you know, the show just came on, it was on for the first time two nights ago. Sure. She didn't know what it was gonna be, and until she knew, <laughs> She decided she had to maybe take me down. Even though, even though Linda Tripp is no longer with us. She's not, but there but is she, maybe in a... In heaven, a, you can't there, actually there, see there, TV before it's I, broadcast? You cannot. <laughs> now, not the first time you've played a, a famous historical figure. I played Marsha Clark, mm -hmm. and obviously in the O.J. Simpson American Crime Story. Mm -hmm. What was that? Thank sure. You. Absolutely. <laughs> Come on. Thank get you. it while you can. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take <laughs> it wherever can. I can get it. What, how far, what do you have to do, like how far do you go to get a historical figure right? Well, with Linda, unlike with Marsha, there was so much tape of, of Linda walking out of her home, so I was able to really study that walk, which was a very specific walk, because mm -hmm. there were just endless tapes of her just Absolutely. walking out of her house. With Marsha, it was just stuff I could see in the courtroom, so I never really got an, uh, uh, her in her normal life, so mm -hmm. to speak. But I did what I would consider a kind of deep dive and tried to figure out what perfume Marsha wore during the trial. Um, so and I, know what I the, wanted to know what she smelled like. I was, was the, the odor. What was it? What was it doing in mm -hmm. the courtroom there when she was, you know, getting upset and hot? Yes. Was the fragrance flying off her wrist in a different way? I don't know. Um, and I, I found the perfume that she wore. I found out from a mutual friend, even though Marsha and I had not met, what the perfume was. And then I decided to go to some perfume websites to determine, <laughs> because apparently perfumes are, they have different iterations. So the, mm -hmm. the Magie Noir perfume she wore back then, mm -hmm. they have been a lot of, are you bored? No. Okay, you're really interested? No, 100% Okay, interested. so there is, a, there is like a, a chat room perfume message board that you can go to, and they talk about all these different iterations of perfumes, and the 2000 version of it was not as good as the 98 version. And the, so I went and found the version on eBay that she wore, and it smelled like a bottle of pee. It was, it was bad. And I talked about this a lot when we were promoting the show, and Marsha, she wasn't very happy about my description of how she smelled at the time. I mean, so much so that Sterling K. Brown, who played Chris Darden, told me later that when I would walk on that set, people would be like, oh, here she comes. Here she comes, because it was stinky. Right. And, but it turns out that Marsha then decided to go buy the same one I had to see what it was, and she also got it on eBay, and she too thought it smelled like a bottle of pee, and it turned out the perfume had turned. So see, I was wearing oh. turned bad perfume, but right. my commitment to Marsha was so strong <laughs> that I was willing <laughs> to... This is, this is, this is your commitment <laughs> to Linda Tripp here. So before I show it to people, what, tell me what so, is happening um, here. So I had to, uh, Linda had a very different eye shape, eyebrow shape than I did. It was mm -hmm. kind of drawn on and the only way to do that was to try to wipe out my own eyebrows. So I had to bleach them and shave them to basically nothingness. And I walked around like this for about a year. And uh, it's not a great look, guys. It's, uh, it's not great. this is. It's Do you see like the amount of distance you can travel from here to the top of the head is really, it's really okay. intense. It's a severe look. You need your brows as a midline point, especially if you have a large forehead. Just to break Just up the trip. Just to break up the trip to uh -huh. the top of the head. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, looks, Jim, put it back up there. It looks a little bit like the, I mean, we I'll know which person is the alien pretending to be human. <laughs> Because they forgot that we have eyebrows. They forgot that they part. They forgot that yeah. part. Um, and, uh, but they look fantastic. They're painted on right now. Oh, really? Under, underneath this, this it's sort of... This is very Joan Crawford it's very like, right now? Yeah, bring me all the puppies. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
we have to take a quick break. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, come back. Uh, when we return, I'll ask Sarah what it was like to have Monica Lewinsky be one of the producers of the series. Stick around.